Hey, welcome to Pranayam Day. So in this breathing meditation class, we're going to practice a technique called Veloma Pranayam, which is a three parts segmented breath. Now this breath technique is beneficial for helping to increase lung capacity. It's also the diff two different types of Veloma Pranayam can be beneficial in energizing the body or helping to calm. So issues like anxiety can be very beneficial on the exhalation, practicing the Valona Pranayam. Issues like depression, you'd want to favor focusing on the inhalation. Let's go over these techniques. Now first, what you'd like to have is your asana or your seat. And because most of us tend to slouch when seated, the pose that was most favored for pranayam is lotus pose. Because of the position of the feet, how they press into your thighs, they force the thigh bones down to the ground so that the spine lifts up. We can get the same lift by using a prop, like a couple of folded blankets, or if your hips are in, a, in, a, in such a state that it's difficult to sit at all cross-legged, then you'd be uh, better off sitting in a chair just with your feet down on the ground. So once we find the seat, we're gonna practice the breath. As I mentioned in part one, the Shavasana quality comes primary. In fact, these techniques in the lineage that I learned in the Iyengar school of yoga were only given to a student once they had a certain mastery in practice. It's said in the book Light on Yoga, his text, which has kind of become like the Bible of how to do yoga poses. There have since been people who have elaborated, but BKS Iyengar was the first to get detailed in instructions about how exactly to do the practices that we are doing. And his text, Light on Yoga, is uh, the standard for that. But he gives these warnings that this is the type of practice that you wouldn't just attempt without a teacher's approval. Now the techniques that I'm gonna give you in these first three of the challenge are mellow enough based on your progress that we should all be okay. But the more advanced pranayam techniques come with a fierce warning. And that's why I am leery to show these techniques until someone has done a course such as the conscious movement course. <laughs> but uh, no, this is, this is serious stuff. And as you attain more mastery over the nervous system or harmony into the balance and the flow, then we gain more insight into what's happening during the pranayama practice, during the breathing meditation. So that's an important thing to consider before trying some of these more intense practices in breath work. Okay, well, let's get started. I'm gonna recommend that you start off lying down. So lie down onto your back, and this is our opportunity to relax and to ground so that we can take that quality into the practice. The most important part of the practice is that you stay relaxed and calm. So turn your palms up, stretch your legs out and let your feet fall open. Let go of the tension in your feet and in your hands. Feel your thigh bones drop down. Feel your shoulder blades fall like river stones dropping down. Let go of the tension in your jaw and in your tongue. Eyes soft. Let the eyes go out of focus. Ears soft. Relax the inner ear. Let the tongue release and rest 
and the roof of the mouth. Notice we haven't even approached the breath yet. Staying calm in the face. Now just bring your awareness to your breath and we'll practice mindful breathing. Watching till the end of the exhalation and then observing the breath fill the body again. And see if you can practice watching your breath for five rounds without letting your attention wander. Just let the thoughts come and go. So not only are we training the lungs, the nervous system, but we're also training concentration. It's said that the memory improves significantly through regular pranayama practice. Now we're going to start to att attempt to slow down the breath. So just see if you can let the exhalation slow down to six counts. And then maybe four or five counts in. Don't force, if that number is too high for you, just do something lower. If you get stressed, just by slowing down the breath, just go back to breath observation. That will be your practice. Each one of these layers I'm gonna suggest is another level of difficulty that you may or may not be ready for. So just practice doing what you should. Now let go of the breath control. Bend your knees and roll onto your side. Press yourself up. Come into your seat. <clears throat> now it's important in your seat that your pelvic floor is aimed straight down so that it's connecting to the core of the earth. Then we're going to balance the roof of the mouth over the pelvic floor. And very important what's happening with the tongue. I want the tongue to move against the roof of the mouth. The tip of the tongue should come just behind the upper teeth. The exact position of the tip of the tongue, you could find by saying the word Boston, and then where the tip of your tongue is at the end of that word, that's where you want to rest. Then bring the middle third of the tongue against the roof of the mouth, and the back third of the tongue. Then feel a gentle suction of the tongue up into the roof of the mouth without straining your throat or your neck. If you do this well, it should help to create a Mula Bandha effect, a lift from your pelvic floor up through your spine. So the jaw and the pelvis are connected Now that we have our seat, we know what to do with our tongue, we're going to just gently, with the eyes closed, tip the chin towards the chest. Now, let's practice Ujjayi breathing from last week. We're aiming towards six seconds in and six seconds out. Just remember, that's too heavy for you. Don't worry about it. Let the sounds around you come and go. All of a sudden, it seems like every animal in the neighborhood is having a bark attack. Instead of hardening the inner ear or creating any inner resistance, 
my practice in this is to just let the sounds pass through. So if you are hearing the sounds or you're having some similar distractions, just let it pass through and train your concentration. Training the concentration onto the ocean sound that's being cultivated through your ujjayi. Nice. You can keep your eyes closed. Next, we're going to shift into the Veloma Pranayam, which is a three parts breath. As you exhale all there out, imagine you're taking the breath into the bottom third of the lungs. Then pause, breathe into the middle of the lungs. Pause, let the breath expand into the upper lungs. Pause and let it all out. Now level the head and open the eyes. I just want to give you a little visualization now and a few tips on that breath technique. There's going to be a tendency to want to pull the air upward. Instead, I want you to think of moving the air straight down into your lungs. Next thing, and this is very subtle, this will come after years of practice, but you just want to have this intention, is that instead of trying to suck the air in, you're allowing the rib cage to expand so that air comes in. The more practice you become in asana, in the physical practice, the easier this will become because of the elasticity of the intercostals. The next thing you want to remember is the full 360 degree expansion of the rib cage. So as the bottom third expands, you can feel side, front, and back, middle, side, front, and back, and top. Think of how water would move down into a jug. It would keep moving straight down as the water fills up into the jug. Okay, let's give this a shot. Sit up tall, adjust pelvic floor, roof of mouth and tongue, close eyes. Always start with the exhalation, empty before you begin. Allow the bottom third to expand using the ujjayi breath. Pause, middle. Pause, top. Pause, is your neck or shoulder strained at all? You took too much air. Relax, let go of the breath. Ujjayi exhalation. Practice again at your own pace, keeping the neck and shoulders relaxed. Even if it's only one second in each time, that's okay. Pause at the top. See if you're able to stay calm and let the air out. One more round. Now we're going to shift into the Loma Pranayam on the exhalation. Let the lungs expand. Pause at the top. Send a third of the air out. Pause. Another third. Pause and let it all out. No strain. Breathe in, ujjayi breath. Let a third of there out. Another third. 
let it all out. Two more times. So just doing the three parts on the exhalation now. Keep the neck and shoulders relaxed. Listen to the smooth sound of the ujjayi. Let go of that breath control. And as you sit with the eyes closed for a moment, just notice the calming, soothing effect of the Veloma on the exhalation. Hopefully you're able to stay calm on the inhalation variation as well. But you could feel maybe after that that there was a more energized sensation versus a more grounding and calm sensation now after having done it on the exhalation. Whatever it is, just notice. Then lift the head and open the eyes. So this practice, you could also just use this practice as a morning versus an afternoon and evening practice. The morning you could do the Veloma inhalation to help to energize you for the day. Ideally, this is done at sunrise, first thing when you wake up, or just before sunrise, and uh, or right at sunset. These are the times when the energy is most ripe for us to tune in to that frequency through our practice. The, the potential energy of a sunrise versus all the energy that has existed throughout the day and the calming that happens in the evening. That's why I'm showing it here at sunset. But these are supposed to be the ideal times to practice. I find that they're very nice myself. Now this practice, you don't have to rewatch this video every time unless you need reminders, but you should practice this every day now until we have the next class. Pranayama is something that you do every day as a yoga practitioner, and that's really how we tap into the benefits. We can't rely on yesterday's practice as spiritual practitioners. We have to keep coming back to the mat daily to really experience any change any lasting change. The last thing that I want to encourage you to do is if you're someone who watched this whole video and is doing these practices, you seem like a more serious student than me, to me. And I want to encourage you to continue the journey by doing this Conscious Movement course. You can become a member right after you finish the challenge by going to my website, yogawithtim.com, and you click on the membership tab. But this is a great way, the Conscious Movement course is a course that I developed for students who have finished a 30-day challenge and they're interested in deepening and advancing their practice more than just random classes. So in that course, I build up your practice, I help you to get stronger and more flexible, and I introduce more nuance into the practice so that you can handle more advanced poses if that's what you're after, or to just become more comfortable and confident in your body with a full yoga practice. And I also have all my exclusive courses on there, like the arm balance course, the handstand course, inversion course, the mobility course, etc. It's worth joining. I'd recommend it. And at the end of the challenge, you can try it for two weeks free. Thanks so much for joining me for today's class, and I'll see you tomorrow. You're doing a great job with the challenge. When you're, you're in the final stretch, the final, how many days you got left? Eight days or so? That's pretty darn good. I can't believe you stuck with it daily after this. That's, that's quite a commitment. So thank you. I'll see you next time. <laughs>